One of the new features the Splatoon devs are now implementing is a tournament manager, a new function of the Nintendo Switch Online app that allows you to create Splatoon tournaments and run them remotely. This sounds like a very exciting idea that gets the imagination running with all the features they could give TOs that only they could implement, features that interface with the game directly. This also gets the experienced TO's imagination going about what they could possibly screw up that would make it useless for the purposes of a standard competitive event. Now, my expectations for this were pretty low, buried not quite to the point where you're hitting lava, but definitely further down than anyone should ever bother to investigate without a team of engineers to support the project. I was thinking this was going to be at the same level of quality as the Smash Bros. Melee tournament mode, where it's only best of one single elimination and every match has to play out on the same TV one after the other. Fun to mess around with among your elementary school buddies at a sleepover at 2am, but hardly useful for actually deciding who the best player in the room is. Now, to be clear, in its current state, with the features available right now, I would rate the tournament manager a solid, they tried out of 10. But it feels like there's a serious attempt being made to create something useful. And with the promise of new features in the future, this could actually end up becoming a pretty valuable tool. It will not be immediately transformative to the tournament landscape, and in fact, almost no one in the West is actually going to use it yet, due to some obvious limitations. That said, if it gets some crucial new features, which it seems like they're promising it will, it has the potential to become the norm for future tournaments. Whether it ever realizes that potential is up to Nintendo. Let's talk about what's in this thing and what isn't. The app opens on mobile, which is nice, and also on desktop, because if it didn't, it would be bad. There is exactly one event format. They call it Elimination Tournament, which isn't a great sign, because by that they mean single elimination, not double elimination, but as evidenced by, among other things, the fact that there's even an event format drop-down menu to begin with, they do plan to add more of them, and they'll need to before this will see significant use in the Western competitive scene. Ideally, we'd have more than just other event formats, but also the ability to create multi-stage tournaments that go from one event format to another, with the slots in future rounds of competition filled based on where teams finished in the previous rounds. There's something odd in the next feature down, the options you can set for the participating team limit. When you first open the app, before you ever get to these settings, it makes you check a box that you've read the community tournament guidelines. Those community tournament guidelines prohibit online tournaments exceeding 300 players in size that aren't licensed by Nintendo. Yet the settings available in the tournament manager allow for the limit to go up to 512 teams. That is, 2,048 players plus substitutes in the standard 4v4 setting. It's possible that a future version of the app allows Nintendo to license certain Nintendo Switch Online accounts to run larger events, and that at that time the dropdown will be changed for everyone else. But it's odd, even in its new experimental state, that Nintendo is giving us tools to potentially break the community guidelines within a feature that asks you to read the guidelines before continuing. Skipping over a few other options, we reach victory conditions, that is, how many matches need to be won in order to advance to the next round, and the possibilities are very thoroughly filled out, ranging from best of 1 to the absolutely excessive best of 19, first to 10. The fact that this feature goes so far beyond the bounds of normal play seems bizarre in its thoroughness when compared to the very next feature below it, to determine the maps and modes that will be played. Every tournament in the current state of the feature will have only one game mode, and while you can strike some stages so they won't be played at all, they are otherwise selected randomly from the list of stages that you've left available. You can set the victory conditions differently for semi-final and final rounds, but otherwise everything stays the same for every round. Now this is a little less unorthodox for Japanese competitors than it is in the West, Many of the most prestigious tournaments in Japan are single-mode tournaments, for example, Area Cup or the Koshin Turf War tournaments. But for some time now, the standard at Western events has been to run either set map lists, consisting of combinations of the four different game modes, all run on maps that are generally agreed to be suitable for competitive play, or to run a standard Game 1 map mode that's consistent across every match in the round, followed by maps and modes counterpicked by the losing team from a list of legal map modes made available by tournament organizers. Neither of those options is particularly close to possible in the current system, 
so it'll take significant updates before we'll have what we really want in the West. The seeding system here is better than Battlefy, which is saying almost nothing, because Battlefy's seeding interface is about as bad as I could even imagine the system being. On Battlefy, you have to give each team a number manually, and if you forgot even one team, that means manually renumbering every team displaced by the change one by one all over again. The fact that we've worked around that for so long is insane to me. But it speaks well of our ability to adapt to the Splatoon 3 Tournament Manager system, which actually allows you to swap teams around in the bracket from the bracket screen. It doesn't appear to have seeding functionality to just sort them automatically like Challenge has had for coming up on a decade now, but again, at least we can make it work. I haven't actually had the opportunity to run a tournament using the new system yet, and if I had, I might have had a chance to get answers to a few of my questions and perhaps find some new ones, but at my current level of familiarity with the system, I have two looming questions which are a bit more important than what features they've managed to get into this beta test. One pertains to player identities. If players can enter this event using an alias and there's no way to find their real account names and discriminators, it's going to require some kind of extra software, even if just for the purpose of verification. There needs to be a way to enforce player bans. And having events that are easy to sneak into with nothing but an in-game alias that took 30 seconds to input might not be good for the community, even if all the big events are using means of verification. The other question has to do with the amount of data this will provide Nintendo about the competitive scene. I want to believe that their growing familiarity with the needs of the community will lead to greater support for that community, but experience has taught me that greater familiarity with the competitive community has meant more surveillance and restrictions. There are people Nintendo will send to big Smash tournaments to confirm that consoles are unmodded. The folks running a major called The Big House were communicating about their plans with Nintendo far more intimately than any other big tournaments at the time in the hopes of staying on Nintendo's good side and establishing mutual trust. That event, and not the others that were keeping more distance from Nintendo, got shut down during COVID for trying to play Melee online using Slippy for safety reasons. There are many in-person gatherings for Smash that Nintendo can't expect to regulate because there are just so many of them and it's too hard for Nintendo to bother tracking them down. But most Splatoon tournaments are online, and if this system becomes a standard feature for competitive events, that gives Nintendo a data set about the competitive community and gives them leverage over a lot of events that they haven't had before. Once again, I find myself in the position of saying, I don't trust Nintendo here, but I trust our TOs slightly more than I distrust Nintendo. The TOs, not me, are actually participating in conversations with Nintendo about the community guidelines, and I'm hearing unilateral optimism from those people. There are a couple really cool features that do make me feel optimistic about the potential of the app, if nothing else. While the tournament is underway, the organizer of the event has the ability to hold whatever matches they want, making it so those matches cannot begin until, say, the spectator has made it into the lobby to stream them. Players joining matches will be able to do so without adding the opponents as friends or even worrying about a pool, but simply by checking into the match on the app. As soon as they do that, they're able to join the match from the in-game menu. This system makes it possible to determine who gets host capabilities for the lobby in the process of bracket creation. All of these steps could make the process of getting people into the lobby and starting the match more efficient, which could be a major improvement to the tournament experience as it currently exists, relying on outside software to get people into games together through a kind of communication that really tests the maturity and resourcefulness of the participants. If nothing else, it's a fantastic tool for running more casual events, perhaps with a streaming audience, and I hope to see that kind of content explode in future as our YouTubers and streamers learn about it. Time will tell where this actually goes, but it is something that seems aimed at competitive play in a way few developments in the game have been before. Just don't try to name the tournament anything with eSports in the name. It's probably something to do with falling afoul of gambling regulations, but I'm going to headcanon that they're just banning this capitalization of the word eSports because they actually know the convention and know that this version is wrong. It's like email, guys. You don't capitalize the M in email. You don't hyphenate it either. The E stands for the same word.